Good evening. In this video, we're going to go through the process of integrating Bookstack with Authentic via OpenID Connect. Authentic is an open source identity provider platform, and they do actually have documentation for Bookstack, although this uses the SAML standard. Whereas in this video, we're going to go through the OpenID Connect standard. Now, if you've come to this video to learn more about integrating Bookstack with OpenID Connect and not Authentic specifically, I already have a much better in-depth video specifically about OpenID Connect integrations on this channel and I'll put that in the description below. This is gonna be quite an informal go through because I've never used Authentic before myself. So I'm gonna be learning throughout this process as well. I'm going through this process just to help someone out on our Discord chat who's facing issues when they try and integrate Bookstack on Authentic via OpenID Connect. So this is really just me going through the process to ensure everything works and sharing the process with everyone just in case it helps others in the community. I've done a little bit of pre-preparation. So I've got a, I've, I've created a couple of little node instances, one with a Bookstack instance and one with an authentic instance. And here's the version. And both of them have been set up with HTTPS and are active and ready to go. Bookstack is still using standard authentication. So I'm gonna show the full end-to-end -end process of connecting them up, but I'm just not gonna show in the previous setup that I've done because it's all fairly standard stuff. Right, let's jump in. First of all, I'm gonna go over to the OpenID Connect Bookstack documentation, and I'm gonna copy across all the initial config stuff just so we have that at the ready, because I don't know exactly what order things go through on the authentic process. But we can get started and copy all of this content here. I won't copy any of this stuff because I'm gonna to attempt to use auto discovery by this option here. When that's set to true, you don't need these ones. But if we end up needing those ones, we can always come back and add those options in. I'm gonna copy that and I'm gonna to switch to my terminal window for my Bookstack instance, which is here. I'll make that full screen. And let's go to my Bookstack instance, which var dub dub dub, Bookstack. And I'll edit my .env file and I'll paste this all in at the bottom. Okay, and I'm going to leave this open for editing because I know that we're going to need to add some things here, like at least the client ID and secret. Let's jump back into Authentic and try and understand that process on that side of things. So let's create a new application, I suppose. Name Bookstack Group. It says it's optional, so we'll skip that one. Add provider. Okay, then it looks like this is where we set open ID connect. We'll go for that one. I don't know if this is shared or anything, but let's. Make this specific. Looks like OITC. Explicit, implicit. Let's go explicit. I'm not 100% sure on the difference, but I always come back over that. And then uh, we don't want a public client, so we'll keep it with confidential. So here's our client ID and secret by the looks of things. Let's copy and paste these over to our config. That is a long text string. All right, issue a URL. I'm not 100% sure what that's gonna be. I'm hoping that Authentic will show that value at some point. So we'll just continue on the Authentic side of things. Our redirect URIs. So that is gonna be our Bookstack URL. Whoops. And then if I go to the documentation, it specifies the URI. Where is it? Callback URL. That's slash OIDC slash callback on the end of that. There we go. So hopefully that's all that's needed. Signing key. Uh, go for the first one of these two very similar things. Okay, anything in here? Yeah, we don't need a long access token, so I'm sure that's fine. Those scopes look okay. Based on hash user ID, that's going to be sensible rather than using something that could potentially change, I guess. And we do definitely want the claims in the ID token because that kind of relies on that. Um, there's a different issuer based on the application slug. Okay, we'll keep that as is then. And I guess it's going to generate us our issuer. So we'll finish there. Right, that created the provider. Do we have to now select it? Yep, there we go. Policy. Uh, any policy must match to grant access. I'm guessing this is an authentic kind of thing to match who is allowed to use this. We'll go any, that seems a bit more open and this is only a test setup. Launch URL, let's copy in our Booksack URL, I guess. 
Um, and then actually maybe you log in, because then if the person's already logged in, they'll be redirected. And then icon, I think I might have one available. Hey. Uh, these don't look like they're required, so I'll just hit create. All right, it says it's created. Still looking at the form though. Uh, let's cancel out there. Oh, there we go. Cool. All right, now how do we get our issuer URL? Mm, let's click on it. I'm not seeing any obvious place where to get our issuer URL. Let's go back to applications. Oh, maybe the provider? A okay, there we go. So it does end with a slash. I'm actually going to open up the open disk configuration URL, which should be the auto config kind of endpoint. I want to make sure the issuer matches up. Yeah, so that ends with a slash as well. So that exactly matches this value, which is what's required as part of OpenID Connect. But yeah, just not often you'll see slashes on the end. I just wanted to double check that. Okay, now let's copy up this issuer URL and then we'll go back to our config and then we can paste that in here. All right, anything else that we need? Doesn't look like it. Oh, we might have to see if our name comes across. I can't remember how standard just the, the name uh, claim it is in the ID token. So if we don't, if we log in and we don't have a sensible name, we have to double check that. Right, now I'm going to save this. And that should be what's needed on the book stack side of things. Now, what I will do, I will log out. Oh, go back to my actual book stack instance. I'll log out of here. Cool, now we see the um, login with SSO, which is what we've called our OpenID Connect integration. I'm, I haven't actually created a user, um, but I don't know whether it will sort of go through the admin user that I'm currently logged in with, Authentic. So we'll see what happens there. Hey, okay. Uh, you're about to sign in with Interbookstack, email address, general profile information. That's fine. Cool, came straight across. My name is Authentic. Let's go to my edit profile. Oh, authentic default admin. Let's double check. How do we check users? Directory, users. Okay, there's a authentic default admin user. So we're probably logged in as this person here. So that looks like it's actually working very smoothly. One thing that will be nice to do is to get group syncing working if that's possible. So if I give this user some groups in Authentic, let's see if we can get those syncing across the Bookstack roles. So let's create, I don't know what roles we actually have in Bookstack, but let's tweak things off a bit. Let's edit our Bookstack config again. And for now, I'll just disable Open ID Connect with a hash at the start. Save that, jump back over. And I'm going to log out books that and then log in using the default admin account, which totally has a unique changed password. So let's go to roles. Okay, so we've got admin, editor, public viewer. I'm going to create a new role actually. And I'm going to call it wizards. A as everything. And I'm just going to give it all uh, system permissions. So it's basically just uh, an admin user at this stage. But I just want to have a separate name of wizards just because it's in my mind and it's easy to match up on. And we know there's nothing else going on with like a default role or anything like that. So our goal is when we log in, I'll be like a wizard within um, Authentic and it should match up across. I'll save this role. And now let's create something of the same name in Authentic. Uh, did a good group, add new group. Wizards. Uh, can I just add this member here? There we go. Should probably add another user as well. All right, that's created. Yeah, let's create another user while we're in here. How do we do that? Our users. What did I create? Definitely in group. Yeah, definitely in groups. Okay. So let's create Barry. Barry Scott. And then be Scott at danb.me. Yeah, and let's make them a wizard as well. Just so we've got someone else that we can log in that's not that admin user. We've also got Barry Scott. I don't know how to set their password. Because, oh, there we go. 
Wrong key 500. I better just put that in a text file somewhere. And I'll copy paste that across just so I know what it is. It's not a password that I actually use. All right, so we've got Barry. Now, one thing, I don't know if Authentic is already providing groups across the Bookstack at all. So we're going to need to know how or if it is providing groups in any way at all. So what we'll do, let, let's set up the uh, group config here. And we'll copy that into our bookstack.env file. We'll just paste that at the bottom again. In the case we enable group sync. Now we're just going to map it up to a groups claim, but I don't know whether that exists yet. So that's what we need to check. Uh, this additional scope, you don't often need it. Only as some platforms, but you never know. We might come back to that one. And remove from groups true. We'll do that just so um, if any of the groups do sync up, we're not going to be confused over what's happening off upon the last login. And oh, before I save that, actually, I'm just going to do one more option from our documentation, which is the OODC dump user details option. I tell you what, actually, it's a bit nicer if you um, copy in the whole lot just so you got the documentation reference almost within your config file there we go so yeah this is going to dump out the user details so when we when we perform an open id connect authentication like flow so we should be able to inspect and see exactly what's provided to us from authentic it will say true um but of course this blocks the login because it dumps out the data so uh, you don't want to do this while your instance is effectively active in production load at all all right so that's saved oh did we re-enable open id connect we did not. Let's re-enable OpenID Connect now. And then back to our Bookstack instance. And then what I'm going to do, just so I can stay logged in on this tab, I'm going to open up a um, new tab in Personal just to be in a different browser session. And then let's log in with SSO and see what happens. So I shouldn't be logged into Authentic. There we go. Ooh, what, what was Barry's email? Or his username is just Barry. Barry. Donkey 500. Okay, that's a good sign. Continue. All right, awesome. Okay, so these are all the details coming from Authentic and we can see we've got a groups property in there. That is a very good sign. So it's nice and simple, it's just a groups property. And I think that's what our config already actually reflects because it's the default that we have in our documentation. So let's scroll down. Yeah, groups claim groups. Right, so what we'll do, we'll just comment out now this uh, dump user details because everything else looks fine. Let's double check the name attribute while we're here. So we can have a look at these and choose what name that we want to um, use within Bookstack as the Bookstack user's name. And at the moment, it's configured to name, and that looks absolutely fine. It looks like the same as given name, first name, last name, nice and simple. We'll leave that as is. And just for reference, that is, um, oh, that's here where we're saying display. You can use multiple attributes. So if it was like uh, you want to do like last name, first name to be all official, uh, you could do that by configuring those individual attributes potentially. But we're not going to worry about that now. We just got the name. All good. We've commented out the debug or the dump option. We'll go back over and we might be able to just be able to like refresh this. Ah, oh, no. Okay. That could have been a timeout thing, but let's try it again and see if we get logged in. Awesome. And it's taken us to the roles page because that's the URL that we copied in. Um, but that also means that we've probably got the wizards because to be able to see the settings and the roles, we need to be an admin. Let's edit my profile. And yeah, we're now a member of the wizards group. Um, so that's matched up okay. And just a point on that, if we have a look at the roles, go into here when our authentication method is open idc connect your oidc you get this extra box here um, where you can set an alternative group name essentially to match up with the identity platform so if uh, the group wasn't called wizards in authentic and was called witches for example we could put in witches in here and then it's not going to match on this name it will match on this name instead and you can put multiple in here as well and that's all detailed in the documentation but that looks like it's working quite nicely there's one small improvement that we can actually do and then we should have actually copied that in so we go back to our config it's this auth auto initiate option now if we set that to true And then we'll go back to our logged in Barry or we'll log out. Well, I'll just click here to go to the home page. 
which will then actually take us to the login page. And what you see, it should automatically go through the login process without, without us having to click this button. There we go. Cool. And that will happen just when the user, like even if they try and access a, um, like a page and they're not logged in, it'll be th thrown to the login screen and it will try and go through that process of auto logging them in. Um, but you do still see the login page if you go through the logout, just so you don't get caught in a loop. But yeah, we've got a nice, smooth, a single sign on experience now with group sync, with authentic, and everything is going smoothly. So I really hope that helped you if you're trying to do the same kind of setup. If you do need any assistance, uh, you can jump into our Discord chat and seek help or go to our GitHub issues page. Authentication can be a very tricky thing to debug because it's quite environment specific, but we'll try and help you the best that we can um, to get you going if you do face any issues. But that's everything that I've got to go through. So good luck with your own setup and have a wonderful day.